Air travel is predicted to grow at a cumulative 3 or 4% a year. There are social and economic benefits that are very real from air travel. We set ourselves some pretty exacting targets. We've got a good track record to date that by the year 2020 we would have technology to reduce CO2 production, i.e. fuel consumption, by 50%, to reduce oxides of nitrogen, what we call NOx, by 80%, and to reduce perceived noise by 50%. That represents twice the rate of improvement of the previous 40 years of air travel. Rolls-Royce has two big advantages in the way it goes around designing its engines. Firstly, we have the three-shaft architecture. Having three shafts, two stages of compression or two different spools for compression in the engine allows us to make the engine more efficient, more effective and also perversely lighter than our competitors' engines. The second one is the modular approach we take to engine design that allows you to strip an engine relatively quickly and only pay attention to those modules that actually need service. But for the future it allows us to drop in technology on a module by module basis to improve the engine because these engines are going to need uprating, they're going to need greater fuel efficiency as they go through their life. If you look at all the Trent engines we've brought in since the year 2000, the Trent 500, the Trent 900, and now the Trent 1000, each of those has made a step change in fuel efficiency, in reducing noise and in reducing oxides of nitrogen. If we plot those out we can see we're heading towards those targets we've set ourselves for 2020. That doesn't mean they'll happen automatically. We need to drive through the technology programs we've got running at the moment, uh, things like the environmentally friendly engine which we've just launched, using our very latest combustion technology. In terms of reaching all three targets simultaneously, that is the real difficult part of the challenge. That's why in a vehicle like EFI, for example, there's no point just testing the technology for reducing the CO2 emissions. We have to test the technology for reducing the CO2 emissions alongside the technology for reducing the nitrous oxide emissions to ensure it works together as a system and we can deliver the overall package. In the design phase, EFI was, if you like, a virtual engine. It existed inside the designer's computer uh, and we were working up the concepts. We've now started the manufacturing phase. We're casting turbine blades, we're machining large casings. That's all coming together. Uh, and towards the back end of this year, uh, we will start the build of the engine and we'll probably spend roughly the first half of next year doing a very complicated instrumented build of the engine with the hope of taking it to test in the second half uh, of 2008. A lot of the science we're injecting into our future products and our future technology is around the combustion process itself. Getting the air and the fuel to mix as efficiently and as effectively as possible and using more and more air with the fuel uh, rather than bypassing it for cooling other components ensures very clean combustion, very efficient combustion and really maximises the use of the fuel and minimises the emissions. The other area of the gas turbine that's important is, is its overall temperature. Uh, gas turbine efficiency goes up as temperature goes up. It's a fundamental law of physics. So as we drive up the temperature, we need new cooling systems. The turbine blade in today's engine is running in a gas stream three or four hundred degrees above its melting point. We have to cool it from the inside. So we need new materials, high temperature materials, and we have to coat it in ceramics. And refining each of those technologies is again part of the key for the future. At the same time, we like to think Rolls-Royce has a very good process for developing and bringing along innovation and technology. So we think of our technology in three discrete horizons, what we call visions. Vision 5 is all about an understanding the best technology that we have today and applying that to our latest products, the Trent 1000, Trent 900, are within that Vision 5 horizon and it's not only using the very best technology. Vision 10 are these big demonstrator programs that bring new technology together, integrate up and, and really take the risk out of it before we put it into a new product. And the environmentally friendly engine project is a good example of one of those Vision 10 technologies. And then beyond that we have what we call Vision 20 and that's where we engage our university network to really scan the horizon for new technologies, develop those to the point where they can be tried out in real engines. The biggest opportunity the company has to deploy these new technologies will be in what we call the 150 seat sector. These are the replacements for the Boeing 737, the Airbus A320 series that's out there today. There are vast numbers of these aircraft already. So at the point where Boeing and Airbus decide to have a replacement for those aircraft, around 
2015, 2016, then that's the biggest opportunity out there to influence global warming from air travel for the next 30 or 40 years. So it really is important we have these technologies in place and demonstrated by the time we launch those new products. The technology alone will not close the gap, will not bring emissions in the future down below today's levels. So the other part of the equation has to be some form of carbon trading, being able to use carbon reduction on the ground and offset some of that against the need for future growth in aircraft.